This is the Websites.ca podcast, where we help Canadian small businesses build and maintain an effective website and online presence. Sean Corbett here, Websites.ca Marketing. Uh, to open today, I'd just like to tell you a really quick story that relates to this month's guest. So I was doing marketing consulting for a small Alberta company in the past. They had really cutting edge tech in the oil and gas space. They were somewhat known, right, in their industry. They were a family of business, um, and they really wanted to get their technology out into the wider world, which, frankly, is going to be better for everybody. So they needed a better way of telling their story and demonstrating it. One of the things we advised them in that consulting session was to make a short video, which, to be frank with you, most people totally ignore that advice all the time. Well, they went ahead with the video, actually, and I came back a bit later to do more work for them. I was amazed at how well it turned out. We ended up using that video you know, to help them get new clients through social media ads. They used it to reconnect with past clients, past accounts. Basically, they used it on all their marketing material and uh, it not only bumped up their prestige, but it went a long way to creating an impact on potential customers that, you know, phone call or email or photo just could not. So the man who produced that video is our guest today. I wanted to get him to chat with you guys about ways you could use video in your business. Say hello to Adrian Halter. He's an award-winning filmmaker based in Regina. His projects have screened around the world. They've aired on networks like City TV, AMI, TSN, CBC, and the Discovery Channel. Adrian, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Sean. So I was hoping you could start by just telling us a little bit about your background and expertise. Yeah, for sure. So I've been in the video production scene, you know, for for over a decade now. And, you know, when I first started, it was, it was, you know, interesting what the space was like, because a lot of people were excited about video. They were exciting, excited about using video to help market them. But, you know, YouTube was still relatively new and, you know, there wasn't as many avenues as there are today, but, you know, things were a lot different back then in terms of just access to various equipment and and what people's expectations were and you know over the last 10 years that's really changed i think companies really understand the value of video now more so than they did back then and you know if you get the chance to work with with the right company or or work with a company who's fortunate enough to have good consultants advising them you know they really have high expectations of the quality and the quality only gets you so far um, you need to be able to tell a good story. And so, you know, over the last 10 years, I've had the opportunity to work with, you know, nonprofits, for-profit, international organizations, national Canadian organizations. And, you know, really the, the heart of everything comes down to the story. And, you know, as my my experience has grown, my business has grown, we're, we're very fortunate to, to have a reputation for telling stories and being able to work with clients to gain their trust in a way that allows us to tell a story that's, you know, achieves their goals, but also, um, also achieves our goals of trying to be a, a leading edge uh, creative video production company. For sure. And I think that's a good point to make is that even for a small business without a story to the market, you're just another commodity, essentially. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, lots of people, like many businesses have a great story. They're just oftentimes they're they're a little nervous to put themselves out there, you know? Um, but I think that authenticity is what customers really, really thrive on what they, what they um, react to. You know, if you can see a video and get to know the people at the company a little bit before actually meeting them, you know, it already helps to bridge some of those gaps in, in terms of working together. Nice. And I know, obviously, we talked before before the program here, and you're working on documentaries. You're not just doing, you know, commercial work for businesses, but to take that portion of the topic for a second, what do you think is the biggest misconception small businesses have as relates to doing video for their business? Um, I, I think I think the biggest thing is that because everyone has access to a pretty good camera in their in their pocket. I think the the biggest misconception is you can do a lot of this yourself. Um, I'm sure you can, and I'm sure you can can create something that may work for you. But it's like any other trade or any other other service. You know, you want to work with the professionals, and I think uh, when it comes to marketing, you want to get advice or you want to work with people that understand marketing, that understand 
you know, what platform's working best for you that understand, you know, how it's going to live on your website and benefit your, your SEO, but also um, when it comes to the video side of things, you want to work with a company that understands how to tell a story. I've seen lots of videos that, you know, they have a really good beginning, maybe a really good middle, but that's kind of it. And they just fall flat. And so, yeah. um, you know, uh, biased for sure on this one, but I think it's, it's best to work with professionals, especially if you're going to put a little bit of money into it. If you have a, if, if a company has a marketing budget in mind, like go out and spend the money, but spend it in the areas that are going to matter for you as a, as a business. And I think the big thing to highlight here too, is that it's not really, you're not producing a video, you're producing a marketing asset that they can redeploy over and over again. So it's not really a one-off thing. It can be reused. Um, the biggest thing that struck me when I saw your work is, and I'm, I'm speaking about a very specific client, but I think this applies to a lot of, a lot of people who would get video done, is if they did it themselves, they would be very self-conscious. But there's something about, uh, when we looked at the footage, at least of what you did, all the principals in the company were very at ease. They were being themselves. They were, and again, I don't know how many hundreds of takes or what kind of coaching you had to do to get that, but they were, they were really being forthright and engaging and explaining things in a way that uh, frankly, Adrian, you know, I had spent months trying to talk to these people and get that stuff out of them and you got it out of them in, in a day of shooting. So that was really impressive. And I think people overlook that fact that when there's a pro kind of orchestrating the whole thing, they, they maybe are even a more engaging version of themselves. Yeah, no, and thank you for that. And, you know, it's something that I've noticed all the time, right? You can be standing there having a conversation with someone and they're, you know, engaging, funny, you know, informative, like as they're speaking to you. And then as soon as they step in front of a camera, they, they clam up, right? And that's a natural human reaction. And so I really pride myself on being able to make a connection with someone that I've just met very quickly, um, explaining the process to them, what we're looking for. And I think if that's clear, then, you know, people are comfortable doing a, a second take or a third take or, or, you know, kind of letting down their guard and just having that conversation. And, and I, you know, I mentioned the word authenticity, like that's so key, I think. And you can't get that if people feel uncomfortable on camera. So, you know, if we're doing, you know, interviews with people, it's good to put them in their space that they're used to, right? And I always say, if we're doing a promotional video for, for a company, this is the stuff you know, this is the stuff you deal with every single day. We just want you to tell us about that. And I think when we approach it that way, it, it helps people feel more comfortable and, and get some of those, um, those uh, answers that you mentioned, like that, that you were kind of impressed with when you saw the, the work that we did. Yeah, for sure. And that dovetails into my next question, actually, which is, I was hoping you could kind of reach into your bag of tricks and tell the listeners maybe a few easy wins somebody could use to just, you know, make a few quick improvements to, to video content that they do for their business. Well, I think, I think we're so, um, used to consuming video, whether it's, you know, watching, watching Netflix or Disney plus or any of the streaming services at home or YouTube or, you know, Insta stories, or, you know, there, there's video all around us. So we've become very accustomed to it. And I think where people, they, they might understand that they need the story part, but they also kind of, then they kind of miss the mark on all the other things that we're able to provide, right? Like background, that's huge, huge element of it, right? Like, where are we filming this? You know, lighting for us plays a really big factor. It doesn't have to be complicated lighting. It can be simplistic, but, you know, that adds, adds to the element of the video. And then audio, audio is the biggest key. People are used to watching all sorts of videos online on their phone, and maybe it's not the nicest visually, quality of, of video, but if you can't understand what people are, are saying, that's, that's a big no, no. So, you know, keep your backs to the wind and the microphone is <laughs> close to your mouth. Yeah, that's a great point. And uh, tying into the authenticity thing, uh, whether this is a good thing or not, what people could be aware of is that sometimes the crappy looking videos like the best example I like to use is that old Blair Witch Project movie that was really popular. Uh, it was the worst looking thing ever. And uh, people thought, oh, that's so authentic because it looks like kind of a poorly filmed folks running through the woods. 
But what people didn't realize is the sound mix cost a ton, probably more money than the entire rest of the movie. Because uh, if you don't have really crisp sound, it's actually extremely psychologically fatiguing. Right. And the last thing that you want, if you're trying to pitch your company to somebody is for them to be straining to hear you. And then basically just have that idea in the back of their head. I kind of hate those people. And I don't know why. Yeah. I think that is, is key, right? Especially if you're putting some money into marketing and you're getting your, your videos out there and every time someone sees them, they struggle to hear it, that, yeah, it does create that, that connection, you know, in the back of their mind that, you know, this isn't, is this might not be someone we want to work with, but we talk about that all the time with audio because you can, you could pass off any type of visual as a stylistic choice, but there's no stylistic choice when it comes to not being able to hear what people are saying. And, yeah. and, and you look at a lot of the, you know, people, online. unless you're, unless you're Robert Altman, but that's just an inside movie joke for people who yeah, are in the know. That's right. Um, <laughs> but you look at a lot of content online now and, and the people that are doing it that where maybe the video doesn't look like it's the highest quality, you know, they're putting a lot of effort into it, right? Like you look at some of the, just like the cell phone rigs that people have, or they'll have microphones plugged into their phone. They'll have all these different things um, because they understand the importance of that. And, yeah, I can't stress audio quality enough. Like that's just absolutely so important. Nice. So I was going to ask you, uh, you now you can talk a little bit. I know you got some big and, and exciting projects on the go. We can definitely chat about those, but I was hoping you could tell us a story about maybe just going in and how you helped a small business and, and you know, what, what you helped them tackle and how it all turned out with video in the end. Yeah, I think you know, the process all begins with just like that initial conversation as to like what the goals are, because every organization has different goals. And if they've never done video before, uh, oftentimes it's kind of like what we just call like the about us video. It's like, okay, like we just need to get, get the word out. You know, who are you? What do you do? Um, and kind of how do you, how do you separate yourself? And so it starts with those initial conversations and just setting expectations, you know, understanding we're pretty flexible when it comes to budgets. So it's, you know, we can give you package A, we can give you package B or C and, and all those things end up being different, but it allows businesses who've never done video before to get in, to get into it and to hire someone without, you know, having a huge um, cost right away, because it can be, if you're looking to work with a, you know, an experienced professional company, it can be expensive and just understanding that. But then, you know, what I always aim to do is like, I want a little bit of creative freedom with it, but the only way I think I can have that and do a good job at telling their story is just really understanding the business. And so that takes time. That takes some phone calls, some emails, some conversations. Uh, you know, ideally we're doing a site visit before beforehand, before we film to understand what some of the logistics are, right? If you're if you're a shop that's running, um, you know, 18 hours a day, it's going to be tough to get to shut down to film an, an interview inside that shop, right? So just mm -hmm. kind of figuring out all those logistics first, all that work that happens in pre-production, you know, that kind of sets the stage for the production. And lots of our, our corporate marketing videos that are around the two minute mark, we're filming those in a day and a half, two days, most. Um, so there's not actually a lot you know, it's a day and a half of work, but it's all that work that you do beforehand to kind of set the stage. And then the, the editing process, um, it can take a little while, but it can, it can be shorter and go a lot smoother. If you have that good solid plan in place, you've set expectations and all that comes down to communication. Like, like anything in business, any industry, the communication between the client and the, and the service provider is key. Right. So yeah, people have to understand that even if it's a day of shooting, there's going to be some ramp up time and obviously then the post time to edit. Mm -hmm. um, so just to slightly go off topic for a sec, you were telling me about a couple of interesting things you have on the go that are beyond the corporate video space. And I wanted to give you some time just to chat about them. Yeah, for sure. So we you know, over the years, our, our corporate video, we do all sorts of things. We do some live streaming, we do some event work, but the majority of our, our projects are marketing videos that are interview based. And after doing that for several years, that's kind of started expanding into some more documentary work. And we actually, um, now we're about 50, 50, I think. So we're doing about 50% documentary projects and 50% marketing projects, which is really exciting because 
you know, we really get to sink our teeth into, into the long form documentary storytelling. Um, but then in between those projects, we get to stay busy and work with a lot of, you know, exciting, you know, private sector businesses and nonprofits that are, that are doing things that, you know, not only keep us sharp um, with our skills, but also, you know, kind of provide a, a bit of a reprieve from the long form projects because the short form projects, you know, they, they are what they are. They're short, they come and go a little bit quicker, but yeah, our, our most current documentary project is a documentary series called flat out food. And that is a Saskatchewan based documentary series that ex each episode explores one ingredient from the field to the plate. So we're meeting with farmers and, and producers and food artisans and chefs and, and kind of exploring the food story of Saskatchewan and, you know, highlighting a lot of the producers here. Uh, we kind of get overlooked as a province when it comes to the food scene. I think people expect to hear stories about wheat and barley and canola here, but uh, there's a lot of other really interesting food stories. And we're really happy to be able to share that in our series. And we've done two seasons and you gearing up for filming a third season this summer. So it's, um, it's, it's an exciting project that I'm really proud of. And it, uh, yeah, it's nice to highlight some really interesting people in our province. That's awesome. And where can folks check that out? Uh, that's available on city TV. Okay. Um, yeah. And then is there a way to check out some clips or something via your website? Yeah, we, we have some of the, the trailers and some other clips on our website and on our social media channels. So yeah, if you wanted to, to learn more about flat out food, you can definitely go to haltermedia.com or um, check out our, the Facebook page for it, flat out food series as well. Okay. Yeah, that's great. I'll put a link in the, in the show description too. So let's say, you know, you and I have made a compelling case to some listeners and, and they understand that they could use video in their business and the impact, imp excuse me, and the impact that it would have. Um, what's the process like to get in touch with you and start and what's the best way to do that? Yeah, I think if someone's looking to work with us, obviously we're based in, in Regina, Saskatchewan, where we work with clients, uh, you know, not quite across Canada, but we do, we do work in Alberta, Manitoba and Ontario as well. And, you know, the, the first step is just go to our website, uh, haltermedia.com and you can, there's a contact form on that page, but you get also get to get a little taste of some of the projects we're doing. And I always tell clients, you know, when they're initially looking, we get a lot of, uh, replies to our question, what's your budget? The reply we often get is we don't have one. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I always think it's, it's good to just to have a, have a ballpark number in your mind and maybe they do, and they're just not sharing it. But um, the next step is finding some videos, not just one. I think it's good to have like two or three video examples of things that you really like and what you want your video to kind of emulate. You know, it's, it's one thing. I don't know if you remember the, um, like the first old spice commercial where the guy's like on the horse and everything's changing in the backdrops um, behind him. Like that was a, it's, you know, very big set and very expensive project, but we had a client send that and like, we want to do something like this. And it's like, well, you know, that's the budget to do. That's going to be quite, quite large. Um, do you have anything else that you liked and so that's why i say you should always have a, a few exam video examples of things that you like that you might want to incorporate into your project and um yeah i guess that's a long-winded way of saying go to our website no that's great well uh, last word goes to you agent any final thoughts on you know video for marketing or video for small businesses obviously i've made my, my living doing this i think video is incredibly important but i think it's important because ultimately it's the easiest way for people to see your face and hear your voice and, and see the faces in the voice, hear the voices of, of your staff. Um, and I think that's just so crucial to making connections, you know, as, as our world continually moves more digital, people always fall back on, you know, recognizing people's faces and voices. So I think that's, that's the, the easiest way for people to get their story out there. Super powerful. Yep. Yeah. Adrian, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Sean. If you're not satisfied with your current website or the service you get from your provider, you can switch to websites.ca for free and get a great support team behind you. 
just visit business.websites.ca. That's B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S dot websites.ca or email Ryan directly at R-Y-A-N at websites.ca. Thanks for listening, guys. Catch you next time. 